Hello, I'm Don Moores. Welcome to Montgomery Week in Review. We've got a great show ahead. Starting off, school choice programs are popular in our public schools, and they have been approved for greater expansion in the FY18 school budget. Jane DeWinter, who comments on education programs, education efforts for this program, she's here to explain. Recent events at Rockville High School made national news. They involved sexual conduct of students, national tension after rape charges, which were dropped in the end. Gracie Rivera Oven has a story of what really happened behind the scenes, and also about how another gruesome story got little coverage. A day of giving is coming up in our area, and this is a way to remind people of ways they can support organizations that they care deeply about. Jessica Wilson from CCI Health and Wellness Services, one of our county's most important organizations, has this story and more. Maryland is known for how grossly, how awfully, how wrongly our congressional districts have been gerrymandered. We are the <laughs> national leader in gerrymandering. In July, on Elbridge Gary's birthday, the Maryland State League of Women Voters will observe the birthday with fun activities. Ralph Watkins from the Maryland League will explain what will take place to put focus on what is a scandal in the state of Maryland. Jane Winter, welcome back. Thank you. Immersion, full immersion, partial immersion. Dual, we're talking immersion. dual immersion. I'm like so confused. I thought immersion was immersion is immersion. You go in and you <laughs> learn how you learn your lessons in a different language. So tell us a little bit about Montgomery County, a little bit of the history of immersion programs and where we are today. Right, well, this is coming up because Montgomery County had just finished uh, two years ago doing a big study about how p kids got into immersion programs as well as got into programs for uh, magnet programs and gifted and talented programs and all of these programs. So as you say this, I'm thinking of really, really ambitious parents pushing Right, well, and that is, that has been a lot of the story over the years. And as you can probably guess, that it ends up being, you know, that there's disparities, racial and ethnic disparities in terms of who attends these programs, and not only who attends, but who applies. A lot of it, I mean, those parents from, from especially immigrant communities. They don't know about it. You can't push. They, right. that, that whole system, the whole society where they come from is not pushing, like, yes. Right. Boy, well, what a I problem. mean, even if it's culturally not your inclination to push or to just say, be hands off and say, school will take care of it, it, they don't know about sure. it. So that there's been a big effort to, and, and so what I would say the superintendents, like to turn it up, it's called early talent development. That's kind of what they're talking about. Okay. So they have made some changes in terms of the processes as well as the programs themselves. So you were asking about immersion. Immersion itself could be partial or, or total. Right. And that, that's like whether your total would be like you're in the whole day learning your just regular subjects in, say, Chinese, uh -huh. and partial is, okay, you're learning some of the subjects in Chinese and some in, in English. Um, then there's also dual immersion, which is where you're learning both languages, and that's really, the purpose of that is really to be teaching you both of the languages, uh -huh. rather than using it as a vehicle to just teach social studies or something. And we're so mm -hmm. blessed in this community right. because we've got so many language-ready mm -hmm. kids, cultural-ready kids, right. that this should be a no-brainer. Immersion programs, I know a lot of people have questions, but immersion programs, have they been successful up to now, would you say, in the county in terms of academics and everything else? Whatever the yes, they, they have, and they have, you know, there's huge, a huge demand for them so that there's a lot of parents who, you know, there aren't enough. Um, that they would like, you know, more immersion programs, more access to immersion programs, um, and and so the other, so one of the things that's going to change, uh, that in they are going to be looking at increasing the number of regular immersion programs. Uh, in two years, but right now, that for the upcoming year, okay. they're going to add three sites for dual immersion programs. Okay. And so there's going to be three new programs. That's great. And then so it's yeah. just expanding and, and expanding. you're happy as an education expert, are you happy about this process? Yes, because, uh, well, yeah. as somebody who, who works for, who has a client that is the only dual university uh, uh -huh. in the country who does bachelor's and master's mm -hmm. degree. First of all, it's a huge demand for it. Mm -hmm. And second of all, this is like the hub, I think, in, in the country 
of being so progressive into looking at multilingual being an asset. Mm -hmm. um, but then we were talking before about the whole changing of this idea of GT programs mm -hmm. into something else. And GT is gifted and talented, gifted right? Gifted and talented, talented right. program, and, and that's going to be changing as well. Yeah, tell right. us a little bit about that change. Well, so right now that there are seven what are called centers for the gift, highly gifted and talented. So you, your parents apply to send right. their, um, don't get offended, their brainiac. Sure. to these uh, programs. Yeah. Um, those are for fourth and fifth graders. So, and again, there's a problem of how do people learn You're about pushing them hard, whatever. pushing those parents. So push. they are, they looked at, uh, and the school system said, well, we have all of this data. Why don't we just screen our own data and find See out who, who we picks. think would, mm -hmm. we, would be suitable for that? And so they did that as a pilot at two centers this year, and they're going to do it at all of them, that everybody who fits certain criteria, which is a lot of kids, thousands of kids, are going, their parents are going to get letters saying, your child, mm -hmm. you know, in, an invitation to apply. Got a minute left. There's a lot more I know Wasn't you were talking about. Wasn't there a pilot that was done? Right. They did a that? pilot um, at, at Fox Chapel and mm -hmm. Drew. Um, but the other one thing I wanted to mention okay. is about the dual immersion, because one of the things that makes this really critical is not just that okay it's so great you grow up and learn two languages but um, there's tons of academic research that says if you're an English language learner or learning a second language what really helps you learn that second language right. is being literate in your first language right. and so we have so many students born in the US speak Spanish at home but cannot read or write a lick of it and so they have no basis to then help them learn how to read and write English. So going so from the from the known to the unknown, something that we seem to forget sometimes in education theory. Yes, isn't it? yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about this more next time. I can't <laughs> believe the time has already slipped by. No. Thank you, Jane. Welcome. We look forward to it. How are you doing, Gracie? I'm okay. Boy, Thanks. what an up and down. I heard you on the Kojo Namdi mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, talking about the, a number of these issues just a couple weeks ago. Correct. Uh, you were really good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you've had this the last you know, year, you've got Silver Spring and then this Rockville High Correct. School. Uh, let's, start with the, let's start with Rockville High School. This national tragedy pointing that, oh my gosh, you know, it, it, immigrant bank, immigrant bashing. It fit the glove of this national rhetoric. Perfectly. With Trump and, the, and the, all these, all the folks who are, who are saying, hey, let's get, we've got to get rid of, they're all bad people. This is, Set yeah. the stage a little bit because we've got such so a short it, period of time. So it was used, it was used as an example of, you know. Tell us about is, what it was. So um, there was uh, allegations that a 14-year-old got um, gagged and dragged through the hallway and taken uh, against her will into uh, the boys' bathroom and that then she was sexually assaulted. At Rockville High School. At Rockville High School, but right. a, by a 17 and 18 year old. Right. Um, so um, immediately, as you can imagine, right. uh, literally the next day, uh, um, Mr. Spicer was already talking about it uh, in a national uh, audience about, you know, this is exactly why and so on. And our local politicians then sort of supported all that, backed away from... Yeah, and here is where, yes, and here is where um, I think we need to, to have a candid conversation mm -hmm. is um, I can totally see how uh, the investigator, having worked with the state attorney's office for years, how the investigator, you know, when you work with victims of violence or sexual abuse mm -hmm. and so on, you, you you side with the victim right away. You mm -hmm. want to believe them. You right. do, but then there's a whole vetting vetting process that has to go through, mm -hmm. right? Because you're dealing with minors in this instance. Right. Mm -hmm. This also reminds me a little bit of the Duke rape case uh, many years ago, mm -hmm. where Correct. the the, the Duke exactly. students were. Crucified. Absolutely. Out so it turns out that the story was not correct. Exactly. So, so tell us what the story was. So this, you know, so pretty much um, in, in, within 48 hours, we had our own county executive and chief of police say that this was the most horrific case we right. had ever seen, and 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 so on, and just kind of put, you know, uh, even uh, more fuel in the fire. Right. Immediately, we saw this backlash, this beast um, that was released uh, of hate speech and, and so on. Right. Um, but once, you know, they look at the video, they looked at uh, the people that were in the bathroom. It was 9 a.m. in the morning. This is high school. So 9 a.m., you you know, uh, actually a little bit after 9 a.m., you just went to second period. So there's a lot of going on. Um, but once finally the police took a look at the video, because it took a few days. Um, and let me tell you, I know John McCarthy. 
He's a great state's attorney. And and I'm sure he looked at this case inside out right. and left no no rock unturned right. as we can uh, and they dropped the charges right. because so they just the case could we've not got hold. So little time here. Mm -hmm. you, can you get to what actually seems to have happened? What was the issue? Why was it dropped? What was the what was the background? Well, pretty much there were too many holes in the in 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 the testimony of the victim in this case, and also the lack of evidence. And also once they actually saw the videotape and just did not uh, mm -hmm. amount to you know, to even having a, even having a sexual charge. Yeah. In a, in a fourth degree. Well, I think that's interesting when you're saying that it took a couple days to look at the video because I know parents whose kids are at Rockville High School mm -hmm. and one of the things that was so disturbing to them was that, oh my goodness, we have these video cameras. How could it happen that, you know, if you hear somebody's Correct. dragged through the hallway, right. how could that happen? And that just unleashed this whole fear that right. the child, nobody was and safe. And in fact, they yeah. had just put right. new cameras at the high school. But while this was going on and the, and, the, and the charges were dropped, we had another horrific incident, quite honestly. We have just a little bit over one minute left. Where a gentleman in Burtonsville uh, got charged with 78 counts of felony of actually raping um, oh. children and on videotape as young as two and a half years old. Horrible. Um, and yeah, that outcry was in there because it kind of did not fit the rhetoric that we have and the ambience that we're living in. But yeah, we should all be so outraged. and. So that the really that merit a press conference. Right. I take yeah. the Burtonsville. Um, yeah. I take the Burtonsville was a gringo. He was he was Caucasian male, um, born and raised in our backyard. That was going to be my <laughs> next question. So yeah. so we really we really need to we really need to come to terms in our community, especially in Montgomery County, as diverse as we are, um, on race relations and also um, that there is a process that needs to be followed before we start falling into the same rhetoric that we hear nationally. Do, you know, coming out of this, do you think that what just happened in Portland, for instance, the hate speech going towards Muslim women, people standing up and saying, hey, right. you shouldn't be doing that, right. next thing, two people are dead who right. stood up. Right. Can, can that sort of thing happen here? We've only got 30 seconds. You know, it, it can happen anywhere, and, uh, mm -hmm. and this is a very diverse community. Um, and. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one to take that when you see any unjust being done, even if it's not to yourself but to others, you need to speak up. Um, but that's really, you know, easier to say than, than done. done. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. But it, it necessary. That's the last word. Necessary is correct. We've got yeah. to step, stand up and, and be counted. Gracie, thank you. Look forward to having you come back. We've got to take a break here. We'll be right back after these messages for a great second half. And we're back. Jessica, welcome. This is your first Thank time you. on the show. It is. Thank you for having me. Well, please, we, we love CCI and uh, and give everybody at CCI our, our, our regards. I'm I sure they're going to be watching, so big test for you. <laughs> so you're, you do the outreach. You do that thing called like finding uh, the necessary funds yes. to be able to help ensure that CCI can do all this good work. Correct. We can't do fundraising pitches on this show. It's verboten. So, we're going to talk instead about what's coming up in terms of the Day of Giving. Absolutely. So, coming up on June 8th, next week, week from today, is an event called Do More 24. And it's an event that's powered through the United Way of the National Capital Area, and it's all about a 24-hour day of giving back to your local nonprofits, um, the organizations that make this community thrive. And we are talking a lot about the political unrest and the race relations in this country. And there's a lot of nonprofits in this area that are doing incredible work to help our most vulnerable um, members of our community. And so this is really your chance to be able to do more and well, to give back to them. Well, not to mention the headlines in the Washington Post over these last few days, not just of this turmoil mm -hmm. and, and whatever, but also of what this budget, what the president's budget lays out, which Absolutely. is gutting, gutting the, the budget or gutting funds going to our most needy. As I think the budget director said, isn't it time we stop thinking about the most needy and start thinking about those who are providing the taxpayers who provide the money? They, right. they need a break now, so I, it's And it's that's absolutely terrifying, to be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. as a you know nonprofit that relies heavily on 
um, federal and state funding to provide affordable and accessible health care. You know, we, we live and breathe by these programs. And so mm -hmm. to just kind of throw our community members that need it the most under the bus, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term, it's scary. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to do everything we can to look forward over the next three years to make sure we are still able to provide the care that these patients so desperately need. Mm -hmm. So can any anybody be part of Day of Giving as an organization or you have to be part of United Way? No, so anybody who is a nonprofit can participate and then of course every member of our community can give back. So they, a lot of nonprofits are having events. We're having a local event partnering with All Set, a restaurant in Silver Spring, mm -hmm. um, to bring awareness to women's health um, because that's such a necessary service. Mm -hmm. And we know there's been a lot of threat to funding for women's reproductive health. So that's mm -hmm. something that we're really spotlighting um, mm -hmm. next week. I know All Set right next to my bank, so I'll have to go to the yes. Oh, how convenient for how you. How convenient. <laughs> and I love CCI. You were saying, sorry? I was going to say, there's a false dichotomy of, you know, the taxpayers versus needy people because, in fact, <laughs> most of us aren't, isn't it likely that most of us at some point in our lives may need one of the social services you're providing? Absolutely. And, you know, we're providing affordable and accessible health care. That's something yeah. we all need. Right. I need to get my teeth cleaned. I need to have my well woman exam. This is something that isn't just for... But don't you also need to be a healthy human being to ensure that those around you have access to health care? Of course. Because you're interacting. If people don't mm -hmm. have access to health care, then they're making you sick. Mm -hmm. It's so true. I mean, this is something, this is an issue that everybody can relate to and everybody knows and understands the importance of it. So, you know, it's something that we all deserve to have in our backyards. Well, well it's such a basic right to have access to health care. So when you have a rhetoric or you have individuals who say, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, right? I haven't heard that. <laughs> well, I think that's not the discussion here, right versus it's a privilege. Well, there was yeah. somebody who yeah, in sorry. Congress wouldn't even yeah. just affirm last week, wouldn't Correct. affirm that it was a right to have, to have food. 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 Right to exactly. So, no right to eat. So, you know, so, yeah. and then, you know, you have people like Mr. Uh, Dr. Carson say, you know, it's just a state of mind, you know, just snap out of it. Right. So, in a county, a in a county like the county that we live in, uh, we do have a tell of two counties. We do ha have a lot of poverty in a lot of areas. So there is a Absolutely. Great need. And I think the most important part of that is living in such a diverse county. We see a lot of socioeconomic disparities, a lot of health disparities in this county we're living in. So it's important to have a day that's focused on giving back to these nonprofits that are helping every member of Montgomery County and not not just those who are underserved. Why is the timing? I, I've got 30 seconds. Why the timing in June? I normally think about all, you know, giving money at the end of the year, you get those write-offs and all stuff. Why, why is June important? Because it's important to give back throughout the year. It's not just, let's get a tax write-off on right. December or 31st. Or a holiday. Or, you know. Checklist, yeah. So it's important to think about these things um, in the springtime when we need them, just as much as in December. Are CCI going to survive the, the issue about 10 seconds? CCI will definitely survive. You know, we've we've been around for for 42 years, so we'll survive. Okay. Well, thank you. I hope you'll come back. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Thank everybody our regards. I will. So we go from surviving to oh my gosh, we may not survive if we can't get congressional districts and and others uh, out of the hands of politicians who just want to keep their jobs. Uh, Ralph Watkins, what's going on? Well, politicians are always concerned about their own political survival. So they, they like gerrymandering because it lets them select the voters who will be in their district rather a, than the other way around. What an interesting word, gerrymandering. I think of a salamander and the shape <laughs> of a salamander. And wasn't that the original? Mm -hmm. Abs absolutely. Of Elbridge, mass back in, the, in Jan yes, Massachusetts or wherever that was? Yes. Elbridge Gary was the governor of Massachusetts. Uh, he was a Federalist, and the Federalists were trying to hold on to power in the Massachusetts legislature. And so it was terrible. Contorted district, <laughs> right. and people said it looked like a salamander, and because Governor Gary had signed the bill, they said, no, it's a gerrymander, which eventually turned into gerrymander. Which but is a little uh, bit easier on the on the off the tongue. Gerrymander yes, is supposed to yes, gerrymander, right? Yes. Okay. So that, that, yes, no, that's that's the origin. Uh, okay. We're having a uh, a little bit of an event 
uh, July 16th, Sunday. We're doing it the day before. It's not the, it's not the meander, is it? Again? No, no, no. No, we did the meander once. Right. In honor. In and what is the meander for? It's, well, what's okay. The, yeah. In honor of Elbridge Gary's birthday, several years ago, uh, we had a, a relay race around the entire uh, third congressional district. Uh, voted, voted proudly. Uh, America's the most, most gerrymandered district. <laughs> yes, yes. Maybe the most gerrymandered district in the world. It's, it's a prize. Galaxy. It is a prize winner. Yeah. Uh, although some other states compete with us, but uh, yeah. it was a prize winner. The, it, it was 250 miles. In other words, mm -hmm. starting in northwest Baltimore, you could have gotten to Wheeling, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. But it took us uh, two days. The best part, I thought, was the kayaking to get to the points that are in the Chesapeake Bay because it has to be contiguous and some of it was contiguous just by points inside the yes, Chesapeake. Yes, technically in the same jurisdiction, but in fact you couldn't get from one part to another without a boat. Oh couldn't get there gosh. from here. Yeah, so yeah, then we wow. had a little a little boat to uh, carry us across the water there. All right, that was then. So, now, that, bring us up to now, because I know people have got lots of questions. This time, we're going to visit a very large number of Maryland's congressional districts, which we can do by traveling a very short distance. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be stopping <coughs> at uh, eating establishments, um, mm. where you may be able to get the beverage of your choice. <laughs> um, and uh, so we, we'll be doing that on the Sunday uh, closest to Gary's birthday. So and that's Delighted Frederick us. to across, I mean, because there's, because they all do come together mm -hmm. and sort of a starburst, except for the first district. Yes, we're sort of cutting diagonally across okay. Baltimore uh, and down into uh, uh, a little farther southwest, yeah. So. There, I was wondering, did I've you? I've lost, I've lost track of it. The, the district lines are so complicated, even yeah. I can't. Watkins, <laughs> let's get it together. Yeah. There was an interesting uh, kind of analogous situation of gerrymandering that was highlighted in the Washington Post which was Jared Kushner's use of selective, oh, selecting right. neighborhoods. Well, the, well, the EV-5 for, program, right, which is corrupted. Right, That's, but I mean, yeah. when you saw the map, it was exactly the same thing. It was, you know, like touched at some well, point. And so it's... Well, that's it, how the Marriott downtown yeah. got a, a very depressed area and was all EV-5. And, the, mm -hmm. and some, you know, there's a lot of this, a lot of very uh, cows in it. But you see this as yes. being... Exactly. Well, yeah, when supporters. I looked at the map, I said, okay, well, that must be in Maryland or near Maryland yeah. <laughs> ever because... Yeah. Uh, but it, it, so. it does illustrate how yeah. you can use lines to create a false picture, in the, in the case of our congressional districts, really unrepresentative of uh, the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. Both sides, uh, Republicans and Democrats, talk about the need for yeah. having non-political... Uh, line drawing of, of districts at the state level, uh, local level, as well as the congressional level. And yet, it never happens. Well, there's a tendency for the Republicans to think that reform is needed in the Democratic states, and the Democrats to think that reform is needed in the Republican states. Uh, I think voters need to make it a higher priority, uh, and both parties will start listening when voters press harder uh, to see reform in this area. In a number of states, we've uh, used citizen initiative petitions right. and have created nonpartisan commissions that uh, draw the district lines. Can we do that legally here in Maryland? Maryland does not have initiative petitions. So <laughs> we, we cannot, as citizens, initiate legislation. we got to go through our General Assembly, which right. means you got to press your, your delegates and senators. 30 seconds left. So yeah. I was going to say, but it might not be in their benefit. Yeah. Right? It, you, you, have to, <laughs> you have to make it in their benefit, you know. So it that's will, a little bit self-serving. Yeah. Yeah. It will be in their benefit if the voters make it a high enough priority. Right. Do you think mm -hmm. they will in our near future? The, we're getting a lot of support for this from the voters, so I think it's, I think it's going to be a hot issue in the next, uh, uh, next election. You're a great guest. That's the last word. Well, thank, thank you, Ralph. Each of you is a great guest. Thank you for joining thank me today you. for the show here. And thank all of you in the viewing audience for joining us for this week's edition of Montgomery Week in Review. I'm Don Moore inviting you to join us next week at this very same time. Bye.